Dwayne Haskins, he rewrote the OSU record book in his one season as a starter. Now he's headed to the NFL. With more on the Buckeyes and the NFL, we welcome in Mark Koontz and Jeremy Birmingham from LettermanRoad.com. Certainly, we knew back in the middle of the season that Nick Bosa was gone. Dwayne Haskins is following him. Could Ohio State have the number one and number two picks in the NFL draft? I don't know that I would expect Dwayne Haskins to be that high because there's such a premium on defensive tackles, and I think Quinn and Williams from Alabama will fight Nick Bosa for that number one overall spot. Um, but Dwayne is certainly in a position to be the top quarterback taken at this point. Justin Herbert returning to Oregon all but solidified that. And I think that's the primary reason why Dwayne realized he had to go to the NFL. He's going to be a top 10 pick, probably top six or seven. That's a lot of money to turn down. And Ohio State has its quarterback plan sort of in place with the addition of Justin Fields from Georgia. And now that's all about figuring out who the next guy is to, to run Ryan Day's offense. We'll get into the quarterback situation in just a moment. Let me ask you this. Bigger surprise, K.J. Hill returning, Michael Jordan leaving. Uh, to me, it was probably Michael Jordan leaving, I think. Uh, what Michael Jordan, all the talk in Pasadena was how Michael Jordan was happy that the Buckeyes were putting Josh Myers into a position and, and saying Josh Myers is the center next season so that Mike Jordan could move back to guard where he's most comfortable. I think what he told us in California was that he was waiting for his evaluations to return from the NFL. He must have gotten that and uh, must have been a lot happier with the evaluation than he anticipated because it wasn't long after they got back from California where he was talking to people about uh, his decision to go. And, it's a big opportunity for a kid, but you know, he's a three-year starter. He walked into Ohio State uh, sort of unheralded as an offensive lineman out of Canton, Michigan, started as a true freshman. Um, so it's hard to tell a kid who started for three straight years and was an All-American, uh, you shouldn't go to the NFL if he's got the opportunity. But you know, the decision by K.J. Hill on Tuesday afternoon, uh, I caught wind of that from uh, Brian Hartline's folks a couple days ago that it was a possibility, but I don't think anybody really thought that he was going to come back because – He's, a, again, a fourth-year junior. There had been talk. It had been pretty much written off that he was going to leave um, all year long. So it's pretty big news for, for KJ to come back. He's 48 catches away from being Ohio State's all-time receiving leader. Um, maybe that played into it. Maybe it's another year of developing under Hartline. Maybe it's just wanting to be a better receiver than he is. I don't know. But he's going to be Ohio State's number one receiver, and it sets up that group for something really special next yeah, year. You lose Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin, and Johnny Dixon, yet these receivers might not skip a beat with having – Ben Victor coming back, Austin Mack coming back. If Austin Mack is completely healthy, you, you've got K.J. Hill. And, of course, Garrett Wilson, the highly uh, touted freshman coming in. And Chris Olave, who saw he did last year as a freshman. So that wide receiving room might remain just as strong as they yeah. were last year. And there's, there's a kid who is, I mean, all the talk this year as far as freshmen went was about Chris Olave. But Cameron Babb from, mm -hmm. from St. Louis, who tore his ACL in the summer, uh, is a guy that Ohio State coaches love. And were raving about him before he got hurt raving about him when he came out of high school. He, he's a guy that can really turn some heads as well. So all of a sudden, it's a group that you thought was going to be a little scarce. Uh, now they're seven, eight deep again, and that certainly makes it interesting for uh, Ryan Day and his offense. Overall, did the Ohio State football program win or lose in terms of who's coming back, who's going to the NFL? Oh, they won. They won big time. Jordan Fuller's returning. Malik Harrison's returning. K.J. Hill's returning. Uh, I still expect Damon Arnett and Kendall Sheffield to go to the NFL, but in some ways I think that's an addition by subtraction for Buckeye fans, especially with the likelihood of new cornerbacks coaches coming in because those kids are going to have adjustments to make technique-wise, and I don't know that that's something they want to do as seniors. Um, so now you have the opportunity for just put Jeffrey Okuda and Sean Wade out there as your corners full-time with Brendan White and Jordan Fuller, and all of a sudden the secondary, which was a problem and a question mark for much of this season, becomes a, a instant strength for next year.